Hey guys, today I'm back in Polybridge and I want to try out a couple viewer submitted levels. Now you guys were not easy on me at all and the second one might just be the single hardest level I've ever played in this game. To start it out though, I found this level by Elephant Taco that seemed like a good warm up. It's also for real civil engineer so it'd be neat to see him try it as well. So let's get right into it. So just starting out here you can see we have two model T's, we have a bunch of checkpoints in the middle and I have to get them not only all the way up to the top but also back down. So you can see I'm putting down a lot of roads like this and on the top, originally I was going for this big steel structure but I actually ran out of steel since there's only six pieces allowed. So I ended up mixing it up a lot and just going for a bunch of wood instead. And in fact, I ended up making this entire top part just wood. And it's a little tough to do that since wood ends up being a lot weaker than steel and also more importantly, it's so much shorter. So you can see here, I ended up getting that design working reasonably well and I still have to get it on the bottom. So same thing, I want to use as little steel as possible. So what I'm doing is just building up a bit of a support structure like this. I have a wall brace in the back and I'm using a rope also to hold it all up. And you can see there, looks pretty good. And the next thing I'm doing is using some guiding arms like this and these I'm making out of steel because I kind of have to. I could use wood and just have a long wood beam go across, but it's going to be a lot weaker and the steel is just a lot easier to work with here. So you can see now as I drive on that checkpoint, it swings down a little bit and that's exactly what I was looking for. Now to hopefully increase the strength of this a bit, what I'm doing is adding on a third guiding arm. And this is going to keep it from pinching right at the top and flipping over. So after I add that in, I'm also adding in a hydraulic and it should push up that middle part as well. But you can see here as I get on it, the Model T actually just ends up snapping it and the whole thing just falls apart. So I try moving it down where it gets a little bit less leverage, but even this couldn't do it. And eventually here you can see this is the best I could do with this design. It pushes up, it gets pretty far, but it ends up extending out so far it just snaps. And I figured maybe the best solution here is just a much simpler one. And since I had six hydraulics available, what I was gonna do is use three on each side of these two road platforms and just pull it straight up and down. And I should have enough travel to do this. Now it's not quite as fancy as my other design, but it doesn't need to be. And especially here, simplifying things is really important. So after I got everything in place like this, you can see as the Model T gets on it, it actually ends up overshooting it and falling off, but it does pull up correctly. So what I do is end up just lifting the roadway a little bit so that it ends up having a bit of an incline to hopefully slow it down a little bit more. But even this, it still just rolled right off the edge. So I raise it up just a little bit more. And finally here, you can see the Model T gets in the middle, it does end up stopping on the very edge of the platform and I was a little worried how it was swinging here but the Model T does end up getting off and hitting its checkpoint. After that you can see the whole thing lowers again and after this is pretty much just rinse and repeat. Model T gets on there, whole thing lifts up and it just runs right off the edge and it was swinging a lot more at this point so I was even more worried it wasn't going to go off but it was easy enough and now they have to return and this is where I had my problem because you see the Model T runs into it and it's just a little bit too much of a slope for it to get over. So we ended up adjusting the road height a little bit and you can see now it's flush and it does reach the end but when it smashes down it breaks the entire bridge but that doesn't quite work so I need the second Model T get over as well. So that just falls into the water. So to fix that problem, what I'm doing is adding in some springs so it has a bit of a softer landing. And as you can see as the Model T approaches it, it gets on that middle platform, but when it rolls down, it falls on its back like this and then it just can't do anything. So what I did just adjusted the roads a little bit to give it a slightly different bump. And after doing this, you can see here, two Model Ts get up and easily enough, it actually falls down correctly. And the second one comes down, falls down the same way. And that actually beats level. But what I wanted to do is make the whole thing out of wood just because I can. And you can see now, this is actually my completed level, just using wood, no steel at all, and you can see everything gets across. So I thought that was a solid warm up, but now moving on to the main event here, we got this really complicated level. It's actually similar to a level I've played before. You can see it has my logo in the middle, but this one I have a much larger task. So to start out, just wanted to say, love the artwork on this level, think it looks amazing. In fact, if you look at the R and the C, there's actually a bit of like stepping here between the different colors. And I'm not even sure exactly how that worked, but looks great. But anyway, to go over the level here, you can see I start out with the car all the way on the bottom here. And the first thing you need to do is get the car all the way to the top. After that, I have to get it all the way to the bottom. And after that, I can end by either going through the R and the C or by going all the way up to the top again. And the easiest thing for me to do is just to go through the R and the C. And you can see the first thing I do is use a bunch of ropes to trace out the path I'm going to need to follow with some linkages. And that's going to be tough. So to start out here, what I'm doing is just building up a bit of a wood cradle. And what I want to do is split up the horizontal and vertical motion just into two completely separate pieces so that I can worry about them independently since it's already difficult enough. So what I have here at this weird sort of triangular looking thing is actually a straight line linkage. Now this one is a very small distance I can cover. It's only about four meters or so, but if I scale it up a ton, I can make a really large one. But the first thing I need to do is find the midpoint between the car and the checkpoint. After I do that, mark it out with some steel like that. And you can see here, I'm stacking a bunch of steel together and making a really large linkage. So this should be able to cover the entire distance. And you can see here, it ends up being really large. Now the other advantage of this linkage is it's naturally going to want to be straight up and down, which means it's going to start out by having a bunch of motion trying to push it over to the center. So that reduces the amount 
amount of weights I'm going to have to have to move stuff around because that's right, there is no hydraulics at all. It is just gravity powered stuff. So here you can see I actually built a really large muscle like this and it's actually completely stable. It acts like one large beam, but if I put a bunch of them together like this, it simplifies the design a ton and just by hooking them up together as well, I can get the same linkage across. Now I also need to double it up so I can keep the road perfectly flat and that makes things a lot more complicated, but you can see here it also lets me brace the two together and this should increase the stability a little bit. And after doing that, you can see in the bottom here, I'm attaching a bunch of cables. And these cables are supposed to keep that node relatively stable. And you can see that's kind of working. It turns a little bit, but actually ended up bracing the wrong joint. So after I just fixed it, so I braced the correct one, you can see here, I'm sort of getting that straight line motion. It's not perfect because this linkage is not driven correctly at the moment, but you can see here, it sort of is going perfectly flat and it's trying to move over to the side. So to hopefully make the linkage travel in a straight line, what I'm doing here is adding on this linkage. And I've shown this in the past quite a few times because it's just so useful. It produces a perfectly straight line output and it's really easy to construct like this and bracing it's also pretty easy as well. So here I'm just using some cables because I figured it'd be good enough and it's actually not quite. You can see it's bending quite a bit and has some problems and in fact the linkage actually collapses in on itself and the reason that's happening is that I actually made the linkage a little too small. So first problem I want to tackle is the one where it's sort of not completely stable and to do that unfortunately I have to use a lot more steel like this to hold the whole thing together. Now I only say unfortunately because the more steel I have the more lag I have and you'll see that just becomes a bigger and bigger issue in the future. But starting out here I made a much larger linkage and I hooked the whole thing up together using some steel and you can see now it actually doesn't fold in on itself and the output of this linkage is a perfectly straight line. So it's exactly what I want to see and and after I had that done, next thing I wanted to do was add on the vertical component. Now I wanted to mess around with the linkage that I've wanted to get to work for a while, and that's the scissor mechanism. So the whole idea is that if you stack a bunch of these on top of each other, you can get a very large expansion vertically with only a small compression horizontally. Now why is this useful? Well what I want to do is have this linkage move over onto the side, hit the custom shape, and the road is going to collide with that, which means that it's going to slowly slide up, and hopefully this linkage will expand up a little bit, and that'll give me my vertical movement. But for now, you can see here as this linkage rotates down, how it collapses in as the two nodes get further apart. And that's the sort of motion I want to see. So after stacking those all together, what I'm doing here is putting down another straight line linkage. This is just to keep the whole thing from tilting to one side or the other. After I got that here, you can see as it falls down, it slowly moves out this bottom node, which causes the whole thing to collapse in on itself. And that's actually a good thing, because that means if I pull in that node a little bit, it should expand up. Now I tried hooking this up to the carriage to have it move over, but there's a little bit of weirdness in the level, and that's because this actually doesn't detach until the car gets to its first checkpoint. So I've just started out not attached to the platform, Form, which means the car is going to miss this just by a little bit. So it's not a super big deal. So for now, what I'm going to do is just temporarily block off the car using a road, and that ends up working out pretty well. And you can see here, as this approaches the shape, it does get stuck on it, but it's not expanding up like it should. And I was originally thinking maybe it just needed a better platform. And you can see here, I have a tilted road to get better contact with the shape. But the problem is this linkage has a lot of slack in it, and you can see here how much it just tilts back. So even if it hits the side of the shape and starts to expand, it's going to throw the car out of it, and it's just not going to work. So what I wanted to do instead was use another one of these straight lines linkage triangle things and when I have this in place what it's gonna do is the same idea it's gonna ride up against the side of the shape but this time instead of using a scissor mechanism to push it up it's just gonna be the exact same linkage design so you can see here I have the whole thing put in place I didn't show the full construction of it since it's identical to before but as it hits the side it actually is starting to move up the carriage a little bit now it slows down a ton as soon as it hits it because it's just so much resistance and in fact right here right when it's about vertical it ends up just stopping so to fix that problem you can see here I'm attaching a rope to the side of the linkage and what I want to do is add on a small lever so system to pull it over using some roads. So here what I'm doing is just putting in that now and just using some steel to get that in place. After putting down a long chain of roads, those are going to pull on the system and hopefully get it to go a little bit farther. So you can see here it actually ends up getting all the way to the top and it actually ends up being good enough to pull it all the way over the top and that's exactly what I want to be seeing. So with that done, the next thing I want to do is add a system to lock it at the very top once it gets there and do that using a mechanical lock. Now I've shown these off before. The whole idea is that I have two pieces of steel and as they get closer and closer together, you can see as they kind of fold down and that motion ends up kind of locking the two nodes in place at the top here and that means that they're going to be very unlikely to separate. So now as it starts to move on top you can see it's just stuck right up there and it's exactly what I want it to do and that should get all the way over to the checkpoint. So now you can see you get the car loaded all the way up there and it slowly moves up to the top, takes quite a while and eventually it ends up getting just over the top and after it does that you can see it moves over to the checkpoint but I realized that I actually can't just take the checkpoints in any order I want. I figured I could probably do that. I was not looking closely enough. I have to do the top one and then the bottom one. 
So that seems like it'd be a massive setback, and it kind of was, but fortunately I could reuse pretty much most of what I had, since I was going to need a system to get up and over that first custom shape anyway. So here I'm putting in a bunch of steel, and this is for the rotator. Now I've never technically made a rotator before, but it's actually not that far off from what I've done. And you can see here, the first idea is to have a couple of guiding arms in place, and I'm just going to rotate these really long arms all the way around the C and the gear, and get all the way on top to where the first checkpoint is. So I'm using some thin arms here, and I figured that shouldn't be too big of a deal since I'm breakable mode is on, and honestly the thinner I make them, probably the better anyway. So I had that put in place, and you can see here I'm just bracing the arms together. I'm also extending them out up top, and that's so that I can put a counterweight up there and hopefully pull the whole thing down. So after I got that done, you can see here, tried to let it run, but it just folded in on itself and started vibrating. And I could not understand why. So I just started bracing stuff together and hoped it would stop doing that, but it really didn't. It still seemed to have that problem where it just vibrated like crazy, and I did not understand why I was doing that at all. So after a lot of iterations, I had to delete it, and instead what I wanted to do was basically the same thing, except I wanted to use my really large linkages instead. So also here you can see what I'm doing is putting in a road at the very top of the custom shape, and that road's going to take the car from my other mechanism and then be able to drive it up to the top. So I just copied over a rope that was the exact length I needed it to be, and you can see here what I'm doing is adding on another custom muscle like I did before. Now, there's a bit of an art to making these, just a lot of diamonds and a lot of cables put in place, but after I had that there, pretty much all done, and I had my two arms that I was going to be able to rotate. So I just had to make sure to brace the rotation points together to get everything working. After that, you can see here I'm putting down two more diamonds at the top as well, and these I'll attach the counterweights to so that they'll pull all the way around and be able to get the car to the top. So with that done, you can see here, just giving it a quick test, and it looks pretty good. It's not vibrating like crazy, so maybe it'll work. Now you can see here, I'm adding on a lot of roads to the top, and this is just to act as a counterweight temporarily. I'm gonna have them on a string in a little bit, but for now it's just easy to put them like that, and you can see as it starts to fall down, it does lift up the other side, so it looks pretty good, and with that done, I wanted to move on to the actual system them to pull it down. And for that, you can see here I have a rope, and between the R and the C, I'm going to have this long chain of roads. And these are going to pull down the other side, and you can see they have a little bit of friction against the C, and this is a good thing, because that means it slows it down as it falls, but overall, it looks pretty good. But I did want to strengthen the mechanism, because I noticed it was sort of twisting oddly once it got into the middle. And to fix that, what I'm doing here is adding on a few more steel pieces, and what these do is, as the mechanism rotates, they should keep it a little more stable. So I added on a couple on that side, and I'm also flipping them over and adding them onto the top. And you can see now, as they rotate, that the road actually stays perfectly flat all the way to the top. Last time I'll show you what happened, it actually flipped over oddly, and this ends up fixing that problem. You'll see it doesn't completely fix it, but it ends up working out anyway. So I figured I've gone too long without actually testing it with the car. So I had the car get loaded on here, and you can see as it just gets on top, the second mechanism ends up pulling out of it. It took a few tries, it wasn't just first try like this. But you can see now it starts to rotate around, and it looks pretty good, but it actually doesn't work perfectly. Instead of the road being perfectly flat, the extra weight of the car keeps it vertical, but it actually ends up working out just fine, because you can see it almost clears the sea just by throwing it over. And I figured if I just used a few roads to catch that, I should be in business. So that's exactly what I'm putting in here, and it seemed pretty good. So I just gave it a shot, and you can see as the car gets thrown off, lands on the roads, and I thought for sure this had to work. But it just doesn't have enough strength to get over that top road. It's so close. But fortunately, it actually did fall a little bit onto those roads, so I can make a less steep roadway. And after I had this in place and just made sure to brace it all, once the car got thrown onto it, easily cleared everything and got to the top. Well, I don't know if it easily cleared it. it. took quite a while, but it cleared it and it ended up getting over. Now, I also did get stuck right on the edge of the road. That's not a problem at all though. So I just add on a couple of roads like this. What it's going to do is just flatten out that transition a little bit and that worked out perfectly. Now with that done, you can see here, hits the first checkpoint and it seems like I'm only a third of the way done, but actually it's going to be pretty easy to get to the bottom because it can just do that. So I wanted a bit more of a controlled fall though, so what I'm doing is adding in some roads for the car to ram into and then just fall straight down. There's actually not that big of a reason to do this besides that I think it's just a little bit better if it falls closer to the base of the R. Makes it a little easier for me to get it onto another mechanism. But you can see here, falls through the first one, falls through the second one, and falls straight down. So looks pretty good, and just added on some catching roads at the bottom. These are going to grab the car and direct it into another straight line linkage. Now this one's actually pretty simple, all it has to do is get it from the base of the R over to that checkpoint, and I realized I made it a little bit too high up, so I had to lower everything just a little bit, and you can see here once I got it all done, car ends up trying to load in. It actually looks pretty good, and it just barely misses the carriage, but I figured I can mess around the roads a little bit to get it to go in there. And now what I'm doing is finding the midpoint of the linkage, getting everything set up, and now I have it in place. See here, the car gets loaded in, and actually it does start to slowly move over, and it hits the checkpoint, but it gets blocked by these stupid roads from the first mechanism. So I used a single rope to tie up that mechanism, and after that, what I'm doing is adding in the last part, which is bringing it up through 
through the R and the C. And this seems like it'd be difficult, but I have an interesting solution that I feel like is pretty low tech, but should work. So I have basically this long lever arm, and I was gonna use some roads to pull it over, but I made the lever arm too small, and you can see how badly it bends. So I just raised the whole thing up a little bit to give it a bit more strength. And after that, wanted to give it a shot here, and you can see it slowly pulls up the other end. And that's what I wanna see. So now I can attach the carriage to the very end of this mechanism, and as it starts to rotate around, it's gonna pull up on this carriage and hopefully bring it all the way up through the R and the C. Now to also guide it in place, what I need to do is add on this very large steel structure. There are other ways to do this, but it was just the simplest one I could think of at the time. Basically what I'm doing is adding on this really long steel structure so I can attach two ropes to it. And this means that these ropes are gonna act as a actually pretty decent linear approximation. So as the car gets loaded onto it, as is the carriage starts to get pulled up, those two ropes are gonna guide it to keep it from going too much over to the side. So it was looking pretty good, except I needed a little bit more weight on the linkage. So I got loaded on there and you can see some of the lag I was dealing with. And now it starts to load up here and it actually starts to go up pretty well. And it goes right up through the R and the C and it doesn't get caught at all. But a problem arose right in the middle of the R because there's just too much room for the car to move out in and it fell right out of the carriage. So to fix that, I'm adding in some roads right on the edge of the R to keep the car from moving in there. And after just making sure to brace it to keep it from rotating to one side or the other, tried it again and you can see here, pulls up just fine. It actually gets caught on those roads, but it is good enough. But right at the top here as it's pulling up, it just slips out of the carriage and doesn't hit the flag. So to fix that problem, I adjusted the linkage a little bit and you can see here, this is the final level. So right now, car gets loaded up, moves up this platform, gets caught on the 180 degree rotator. After that, takes a little bit of time, but starts to rotate all the way up. Probably best to limit the speed here because the car might fall out of the carriage if it's going too fast. You see car gets falling under the ramp at the top, lands on it, hits its checkpoint between the R and the C, then it starts to fall down. Probably could have done a more controlled fall here, but it seems like a pretty good solution since it falls straight into this linear movement mechanism. Gets caught in this carriage, starts to move up, gets brought up right between the R and the C, and finally here, hits the checkpoint flag. That was a difficult level. Probably the hardest one I've played in this game so far, but it was a ton of fun, and I love when Unbreakable mode is on for this kind of stuff, because I could just do crazy things like this. So if you ever want to submit some more levels to me, I'll probably be doing another few episodes of this. Make sure to subscribe if you want to see more content like this. Feel free to leave a question or comment down below, and otherwise, until next time.